Okay, yesterday we worked through <clears throat> a lot of stuff from 1-5. I just wanted to make sure you guys are familiar with that. This stuff is more from the like, 1-1-1-2 one, 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 stuff. 1-3 uh, is our domain range, interval of increase, decrease, constant. We did those well yesterday. But if you're given points, guys, and asked to find the distance, the midpoint, the slope, <clears throat> some of us lost points for a variety of reasons with this. A, we didn't have the formula right. B, you told me 17 minus 3 was 15, something like that. <laughs> like little mistakes that really made a huge difference. So let's make sure that we have our formulas correct. Our distance formula is the x's and the y's together, all right? You're going to subtract them. It doesn't matter what order you do. <clears throat> but the x's need to stay with the x's, the y's with the y's. You're going to subtract those two. It's very similar to slope. Square them and add. You should not get a negative number underneath your radical. For those of you who got negative numbers, guys, you're talking about distance. It's not a negative number. So given two points, I'm going to label this is my x, this is my y, this is my x, this is my y. So if we're going to fill in the formula, your two x's are 0 and 8. doesn't matter where you put them. I'm just going to say 0 minus 8 squared plus my y's are negative 4 and positive 4. So I'm going to say negative 4 minus 4 squared. <clears throat> questions. All right, now we just simplify. 0 minus 8 is going to give me negative 8 squared plus negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8 squared. Agreed? So then I have 8 squared is 64 plus 8 squared is 64. And then what's 64 and 64? What is it? 128, okay? A lot, some of us got here, <clears throat> but then when we had to break down, we didn't know what to do. You have to always break down into a non-perfect and perfect square, guys. I like to do the upside down division thing. I'm gonna say 128. Start with the smallest non-perfect square. That's gonna be two. Does two go into 128? Yes, two goes into 12 six times. Two goes into eight, how many times? Four. All right, does two go into 64? Yes, 2 goes into 6, 3. 2 goes into 4, 2. Agreed? Okay, again, does 2 go in? Yep. <clears throat> How many times 2 go into 32? 16. Does 2 go into 16? How many times? 8, good. Does 2 go into 8? How many times? And then 2 goes into 4, 2. All right, so now you're like, okay, I have a whole bunch of 2s. Some of you got really lost in your factor trees and all your branches that you wrote. <clears throat> That's why I like to do this. You want to bring out pairs. Any pair that you can bring out, you represent with one of those numbers, meaning I have one pair of twos here, correct? So I'm gonna write down a two, just one. I took out one pair. So now I notice I have another pair of twos, so I'm gonna bring it outside as well. Do I have another pair of twos? Yes, I'm gonna bring that outside as well. Do you have any numbers left that aren't paired up? Yes, that's gonna have to stay inside your house. Anything that is a pair, you can bring outside. We're going to multiply this out in front. What's 2 times 2 times 2? 8. So your correct simplified answer for the square root of 128 <clears throat> is 8 root 2. You have to be able to break down radicals, guys. All right, midpoint. I had several of you. Your midpoint formula. How do you find the midpoint? What do you do to the x's? You add the x's. What do you do to the y's? You add the y's. I had several of you that subtracted. <clears throat> That's not the midpoint. You have to add the two endpoints and divide by two. You find the place in the middle. Same thing with the y's. So again, it doesn't matter what order you add them. I'm going to say 0 plus 8 divided by 2. And then you have negative 4 plus 4 divided by 2. What is 0 plus 8? 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4, correct? <clears throat> What's negative 4 plus 4? 0, and 0 divided by 2 is 0, and that's it. It's an ordered pair. It's a point. It needs to be in parentheses, your x comma your y. Some of you put y first, then x. It's got to be in the correct order, guys. All right, lastly, we're going to talk about slope. <clears throat> Remind me what the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. you got to keep your y's together and your x's together. Whichever y you use as <clears throat> your y2, you need to use the same corresponding x. 
So if I say negative 4 minus 4, what x do I need to start with in the denominator? If I say negative 4 minus 4, I need to start with 0. So I say 0 minus 8. In order for you to get your signs correct, the corresponding y that you start with in the numerator, you have to start with that x in the denominator. So I have negative 4 minus 4 gives me what? Negative 8 divided by 0 minus 8, negative 8. What's my slope, guys? Positive 1. <clears throat> in order for your signs to be correct, whichever y value you start with in the numerator, you have to start with the corresponding x value in the denominator. Questions on distance, midpoint, and slope? All right, let's talk again about parallel, perpendicular, and neither. <clears throat> Simple math is really important in something like this because if you add or subtract incorrectly, that could change your answer from parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So remind yourself, guys, if you have two lines and you're comparing their slopes, what do you know about parallel lines? They have the same slope, right? What do you know about perpendicular? Opposite what? Reciprocal. Good. Opposite reciprocal. So if I have two lines that are written like this, how would I figure out <clears throat> if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither? What do I need to do first? I need to get them in what? y plus 5x equals 9, and this one over here is y minus 1 equals 1 fifth x. Can I just look at this and tell you what the slope is? For one of them, you can. But what do you need to get, do first? What should you do with each line? Get it into what? y equals mx plus b. So here I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. So I have y equals negative 5x plus 9. Agreed? <clears throat> Go one step further and tell me what the slope is for this line. Negative 5 over what? Uh -huh. Do you have to write the one? No. But sometimes it's helpful when you're comparing. So now over here, do you guys agree we're going to add one to both sides? So I have y equals 1 fifth x plus 1. What's the slope for this line? Positive 1 over 5. So compare these two. This is the only thing that matters. Are those exactly the same number? No. So they're not parallel. Are they opposite reciprocals of each other? Yes. Is one positive, one negative? Yes. Is one 5 over 1 and the other one's 1 fifth? Yes. So you just proved that these are perpendicular. You guys, I'm not asking you, one second, I'm not asking you, you are not to graph these lines on your own made-up graph and show that they cross. That doesn't prove that they're perpendicular, parallel, or neither. You have to algebraically show me. Yeah. So if it's 5 over 1, it's 1 over 5. Correct. It has to be opposite signs. All right, if you're given two sets of points, how would you prove <clears throat> parallel, perpendicular, or neither? you got to find the slope. So just be careful. Here's your x's. Here's your y. I want to do the blue line one on the left. So <clears throat> in the numerator, I'm going to say 4 minus 4. And in the denominator, I'm going to say 0 minus 2. You guys agree? What's 4 minus 4? 0 over negative 2. Yes? Okay. So then over here, here's my x and here's my y. So I'm just going to say 8 minus 2. So then I have 3 minus 3. What's 8 minus 2? 6 over 0. Okay, so in blue, I have 0. And in pink, I have undefined. What kind of a line is going to have 0 slope? Mm -hmm. A horizontal. And what kind of, perfectly horizontal. And what kind of line is going to have an undefined slope? Perfectly what? Vertical. So they're going to meet how? They're going to meet at a right angle. If you have zero and undefined, guys, those are perpendicular. Those are opposite reciprocals of each other. <clears throat> Just think about it. If you flip zero over negative two, it's negative two over zero, it's undefined. <clears throat> All right, we good? Okay, you guys are going to have an average rate of change question. How do you find the average rate of change? 
you use which formula? The slope. Well, this is just a longer kind of slope problem. All right, average rate of change when it's not a linear function. We use the slope formula, <clears throat> but we call it rate of change. We don't call it slope. <clears throat> so there's two things you have to do here. You're finding the average rate of change over an interval between negative 1, sorry, negative 2 and 1. So you have to first evaluate with each x value that you're given. You're going to take the x value, plug it into the equation that you're given to find what? The y. Okay, so the first one I'm going to say 5 times negative 2 to the 4th minus 2 times negative 2 plus 3. All right, take your time. <clears throat> Use scrap paper or something if you need to, but take your time. Plug in everything with parentheses. What are we going to evaluate first? Negative 2 to the 4th? Okay, so 16. And what's 16 times 5? Look, 16 times 5... What is it? Okay, so 80. Then I have negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be plus 4 plus 3. You guys agree? So what's 80 plus 4 plus 3? 87. All right, so when you have negative 2 as your x value, your y value is 87. You guys agree with that? Okay. Now we're going to do the <clears throat> exact same thing, but now we're going to plug in what number? 1. So I have 5 times 1 to the 4th minus 2 times 1 plus 3. Well, what's 1 to the 4th? 1 times 5 is just 5, right? So I have 5 minus 2 plus 3. What's 5 minus 2? 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. So here my point is 1 comma 6. Have I found the average rate of change yet? No. We just found the two points to which we're finding the average rate of change between. So this is my x value. This is my y. I'm going to say 87 minus 6. Since I started with 87, what do I have to start with in the, the bottom? Negative 2 minus 1. Good. What is 87 minus 6? 81. What is negative 2 minus 1? Negative 3. What's 81 divided by negative 3? How much? Mm -hmm. Yep. So negative 27 is your average rate of change. <clears throat> All right. And example 11, they're asking you to find the zeros. What's another way to, I could ask you that question? Solutions. What's another one? X. Good. X values, X intercepts. It's where the graph crosses the X. One more. Begins with an R. Roots. <clears throat> Solutions, x-intercepts, roots, zeros, those all mean the same thing. Set the function equal to zero and solve it. A lot of times we're going to be factoring. Because remember, f of x is a fancy way of saying y. So what you're going to do is replace f of x with zero. So you have 2x squared minus 7x minus 30 equals zero. All right, we're going to have to factor here. <clears throat> is there a GCF? No. So that means we have to do A times C. So 2 times negative 30, that gives me negative 60. So I need the factors of negative 60. Remember, I do this a little different than some people. But I need the factors of negative 60 that multiply to give me negative 60, but add to give me negative 7. What would that be? Very good. X minus 12, X plus 5. Doesn't matter where you put the 12 and the 5, just make sure your signs are correct. Now, <clears throat> since my A term is not 1, I'm going to take that A term and I'm going to divide both of my factors by it. What is 12 divided by 2? So I have x minus 6. Does 5 divide by 2 nice and pretty? No, so 2 becomes my coefficient. 2x plus 5. And now I do what with each of those parentheses? Equal to 0. Equal to 0. Good. So x minus 6 equals 0, 2x plus 5 equals 0. So here I have x equals 6, and here I'm going to subtract 5, divide by 2, so x equals negative 5 over 2. Yeah? 
At the very beginning, guys, what's the highest exponent you see? What's the highest exponent? Two. So how many times is this going to cross the x-axis? Highest exponent tells you how many zeros. So it's going to cross two times. Did you find both of them? Yes. Good job. All right. Scoot along, scoot along. Again, we're going to do the same thing. You're going to set your function. Yep. Sure. Sure. And then solved it? Yeah. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, how do we solve this problem? One time I did it with cross multiplication. What's another way I could do this? How do I get x by itself? How do I solve? I have to get rid of the denominator, correct? So what would I multiply both sides by? 9x squared minus 4. What happens when you have a 9x squared minus 4 in the numerator and 1 in the denominator? They cancel. So you have x minus 4 over here equals. Well, what's 9x squared minus 4 times 0? Zero. 0, okay. So I have x minus 4 equals 0. <clears throat> so what does x equal? 4. This one's a little bit different because it has a denominator. This would be a domain issue. What would we have to do? If this question asks you for something else, if they ask you, hey, find the, <clears throat> this is a rational function. You'll understand how to find the zeros once we get to that in 2.7. But when they ask you um, what the domain would be, what would we have to do with this denominator? If they said, what's the domain of this function? What you have to set it equal to? Zero, because you cannot have the denominator be zero. So anytime you have a variable that is in a denominator and they're asking for a domain, they're not asking that here, I'm just saying. If they do, you need to set that equal to zero. All right, let's look at this one. Be careful with this question, guys. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite this. Do you guys see that the 2x is underneath the radical and the minus 1 is on the outside, correct? Okay. So if we're going to solve this, what do we do first? We're going to add the 1. Good. You've got to get the radical by itself before you start squaring and all that. <clears throat> so now what happens? Now you square both sides. So 2x equals 1. So what does x equal? 1 half. Good. Good. Good, good, good. And guys, what can you do with your answer? You got x equals a number. What can you do with it? You plug it back in. What's 2 times 1 half? 1. What's the square root of 1? 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's just what we said it equal to, right? All right, four terms. Anybody remember what to do with four terms? Grouping. Good. First look for GCF. See if there is one. If there's not, no big deal. Let's group. You want to take the first two terms and the second two terms. Keep that sign. The one that's with the third term, keep it there. So I look at my first parenthesis, 2x cubed minus 10x squared. What do they have in common? 2x what? I, mean I agree, 2x squared. So I'm going to write underneath here, just so I don't forget it. Now, guys, we're not taking it out. We're just moving it to the front. If you don't write the 2x squared out in front, then your answer is not correct. So make sure you don't lose it. It didn't go anywhere. It's just we moved it out in front. So 2x cubed divided by 2x squared is going to be x. Negative 10x squared divided by 2x squared is just going to give me minus 5, correct? <coughs> now, what is the point of grouping? What should your second parenthesis look like? <coughs> should be the same thing. You should, you're trying to discover the common factor that's in there. So I look at the next one. If I lead with a negative, do we like to leave negatives out in front? No, let's take it out. So what can I take out between negative 3x and a positive 15? The 3. I'm going to take out a negative 3. So negative 3 divided by 3 leaves me with x. 15 divided by negative 3 leaves me with negative 5. What did you guys just discover here? There's two terms. Tell me. Sure. There's two terms. 2x squared times x minus 5 is one term. And then negative 3 <clears throat> times x minus 5 is the other term. What do they have in common? They both have an x minus 5. So that's your new GCF. You're going to divide out an x minus 5 from both of these. Just one. You only write it one time. So I'm going to write my x minus 5 out in front. 
And then when I divide it out, my leftovers get their own parentheses. So my second parenthesis is 2x squared minus 3. And this is all set equal to 0. Now, if you can, if that's the difference of perfect squares or something, if, that, if you can go ahead and <clears throat> break that down, feel free to. If you can't, no big deal. But have we answered the question yet? Have we found out what x equals? So from this point, ladies and gents, what do we do? Set them both equal to 0. Good. So here I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So x equals 5. On this one, I'm going to add 3. Agreed? 2x squared equals 3. I'm going to divide by 2. So I have x squared equals 3 over 2. Don't worry about rationalizing or anything like that. I'm not asking you guys to graph this. Just kind of going through the algebra of how to solve this. What do I do to get x all by itself? Take the square root. Guys, when you take the square root, what goes in front of your answer? Plus or minus. Don't forget that. For a case like this, if this were your answer, you could leave it like this. Do we generally leave <coughs> fractions underneath the radical? No, you would want to rationalize and stuff. But just, just to show you, don't forget the plus or minus. Question, are you stretching? <laughs> All right, if you have a question, just stop me. Just I'm going to ignore your stretching for right now. All right, let's look at E. What's the first thing you should look for in a problem like this? The factoring problem. What's the first thing we look for? GCF. Make your problem easier. What number or letter can I take out of all three of these? A 2 and an X. Guys, notice, what's the highest exponent? 3. So how many answers should we have? 3. Remember that. So if I take out a 2X, you guys agree I'm left with X squared plus 3x minus, what's 56 divided by 2? <coughs> what's 56 divided by 2? 28, okay. Can I factor this a little more? What times what's going to give me a negative 28 when I multiply, but a positive 3 when I add? x... 4 and 7, what goes where? Negative yep, negative 4, positive 7, good. So guys, how many things am I setting equal to 0 in this case? 3. three. The 2x out in front, the x plus 7, and the x minus 4. If you take out just a number, you could still set that equal to 0. So just say I took out a 2. They all had a 2 in common. You would say 2 equals 0. No, okay, not true. But if it has a variable with it, that is one of your answers. This would be x equals 0. This would be x equals negative 7. And this would be x equals 4. So we have all three places that this graph would cross the x-axis. Last thing you guys have to do <clears throat> is to find the inverse algebraically. Okay, there's a couple things we need to remember with this. First of all, you have to write your answer with inverse notation. Whatever letter, G, F, H, you just want that little negative 1 up in the top to say, hey, this is an inverse. But if I'm looking at number 12, what are the steps? I left you guys a 15-minute video on how to find the inverse. If we're doing number 12 right here, what are the steps to find the inverse? G of x is what? Same thing as saying y. So this is y equals 1 half x plus 7. How do we go about algebraically finding the inverse? First thing we do with x and y, you switch them. So x equals 1 half y plus 7. Now what are we going to do to find the inverse? We're going to isolate y. You want to solve for y. You switch x and y because remember inverse means switch, opposite. So the first thing you do is switch the places of x and y, and then you just algebraically solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Agreed? You guys with me? So x minus 7 equals 1 half y. <clears throat> Still trying to get y by itself, so what would I do to both sides? Multiply by 2. Okay, look, I'm multiplying the whole thing by 2. So you have y equals, you could say 2 times x minus 7. What's another way you could write it? 2x minus 14. Okay, either one of those is fine. I don't care. And then the last thing you have to do is replace the y and say, hey, don't forget, this is an inverse. So this was g. So I'm going to say g negative 1 of x equals... <clears throat> 2x minus 14, or you can say g negative 1 of x 
equals 2 times x minus 7. And I told you guys in the video, you can compare your original to your inverse, and you should be able to see, oh, I did the opposite. Look at the original. You were multiplying by 1 half or dividing by 2, correct? And then adding 7. In the inverse, <clears throat> we multiplied by 2 and subtracted 7. It'll always turn out to be the opposite. You can just go back and kind of just cross-check and say, okay, yeah, it's opposite, 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 opposite. We're good. All right, let's look at number 13. Y equals X minus, whoops, 2 squared plus 1. All right, first thing I need to do with X and Y is... Switch them, right? We've got to switch their places first. So x equals y minus 2 squared plus 1. Now, I'm trying to get y all by itself. We have to undo all of this stuff on the right-hand side. So what should I do first? Subtract the 1. Perfect. So x minus 1 equals y minus 2 squared. Now what? Take the square root. Now, guys, watch this. What kind of a root am I taking? Is it even or odd? It's even, right? Square root, fourth root, sixth root. If I physically put the square root on, what goes in front of my root? Plus or minus. Do not forget that. That is only with an even root. Two, four, six, eight. If you're taking a cube root or a fifth root, something like that, it's not. It could be, it's, it's not plus or minus. But if you have an even one, so this says plus or minus the square root of x minus 1 equals y minus 2. I have one more step to get y by itself. Yeah, sure. One more step to get y by itself. What do I do? I'm going to add 2. Where does the 2 go? You can put it in front if you want. 2 plus or minus x square root of x minus 1. That's fine. You could also put it behind, but if you do that, you need to make sure it's like way on the outside. It doesn't sneak up under your <clears throat> radical. Does everybody see that? And then the last thing we need to do is replace the y and put our inverse. So that would be f negative 1. I am going to take off points, guys, if you don't put the inverse notation. You have to say, hey, look, this is the inverse that I found. So compare. In the original, you were subtracting 2. In your inverse, you're adding 2. In the original, you had x plus mine you had your quantity squared <clears throat> in the inverse you have the square root and the two and the one did what they switch spots so just be mindful of that questions all right last one then we're done all right it's the fifth root of 2x plus 11 equals, we'll say y. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is switch. Yep, we're going to switch. So it's x equals the fifth root of 2y plus 11. Perfect. All right, now is there anything on the outside of that root that I can go ahead and move right away? No. All right, so I just have to get rid of the root itself. How do you get rid of the fifth root? What do you raise it to? To the fifth power. Perfect. So what you do to one side, you do where? To the other. Perfect. So you have x to the fifth. So x to the fifth equals 2y plus 11. Now just use algebra, guys. You want to get y all by itself. So what am I going to do? Subtract 11. Perfect. x to the fifth minus 11 equals 2y. And now divide by 2. Perfect. So y equals x to the fifth minus 11 divided by 2. And then we're going to replace y with f negative 1 of x, or g, or a, whatever it is. It's a, right? All right, a. <clears throat> If you use a different letter, it's fine. But look, compare. Compare from the beginning to the end. In the original, we were taking the fifth root. In the inverse, we raised to the fifth power, yeah? In the original, you were adding 11. In the inverse, we're subtracting 11. In the original, you were multiplying by 2. In the inverse, you're doing what? Divided by 2. Every time you guys do an inverse, you should be able to look and just kind of cross-reference and tell yourself, oh, yeah, I'm on the right track. We're doing a good job. <clears throat>
Questions?